Hey folks, good morning, good afternoon, and a good evening to a few out there, I suppose. It's the Earthmaster here on this Sunday, February 19th, 2023. It is about 1025 in the a.m. here along the West Coast. Man, goodness, I can't believe it's almost March. Springtime just around the corner. Uh, latest earthquake activity shows a 3.6 into the region of Turkey. Uh, still seen some aftershock activity there on the globe around the Turkey area uh, and also some further activity north and to the northwest. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here across the USGS map showing the last 24 hours of earthquake activity. Going to start here along the west coast uh, where, yeah, for the most part, uh, haven't really seen any major changes overnight across northern California or southern California for that matter. Just a little bit of typical microquake activity across the west coast and uh, a look across the rest of the country it looks awfully quiet as well not really seeing any major earthquake activity or any, even minor earthquake activity uh, glance at the yellowstone overview stand by for a second while i pull it up uh, confirms well no activity well actually it looks if you look over here uh, around when was this this was early early last night a little bit of microquake activity, but even then, that's some uh, minor, very minor uh, adjustment up there at Yellowstone. Uh, looking further down south around Puerto Rico area, uh, a lot of this coming in from yesterday, but we did see a couple more twos and threes around the Puerto Rico area. Still watching that region potentially uh, for some further large scale movement, considering all the activity we've seen there recently around the Caribbean plate. Latest earthquake down into the South America region of 4.5, 142 kilometers deep into the Peru Chile Trench here. Uh, another spot where we're seeing some adjustment uh, yesterday, of course, in the morning hours, we've seen a deeper 4.6 into the subduction zone here of the, the um, South Sandwich Islands, South Sandwich Trench here at the northern end. Uh, and then a few hours later, a couple hours later, actually, we've seen a little bit of adjustment upstream uh, towards where the accumulated uh, stress tends to build. Overnight, we did see another earthquake back building here, uh, here excuse me, <clears throat> just on the uh, east side of the subduction zone. Uh, normally, when I see stuff like this, it tells me that uh, this region is locked uh, and can't really accumulate or release any more strain in that area but uh i don't know we, we had that eight pointer 8.1 a couple years ago here 2021 and quite a bit of activity last year as well uh, so this region may be getting ready to see at least maybe another larger earthquake far as uh, something above the five level because that earthquake struck just on the eastern side of that plate boundary the subduction zone itself uh, either way, an uptick in movement uh, around the South Sandwich Islands area, something we haven't seen in the past month or two. Uh, movement around Turkey, still continuing. Uh, last one uh, looks like overnight, did see a 4.6 Eastern Turkey, kind of up there away from where the, uh, the uh, seven pointer struck there last week or been over a week now, I believe, right? Let's see here. 7.8 was further down south here. 7.5. I kind of like to look at the um, the areas here that are showing a little bit of migration across the region. And um, this 4.6 struck a little bit further to the northeast along that plate boundary. Still showing that uh, general migration across the region. Down in Cyprus area. Uh, this earthquake here, I believe, uh, actually this morning, 3.6. Goodness, USGS showing a 3 in the international community. I can't believe it. <laughs> uh, that kind of threw me for a loop right there. 3.6 at 3.6 kilometers deep. Well, some numbers there. Uh, further to the west, around the Mediterranean area, we did see that uh, 4.7 coming in yesterday. All right, uh, let's see what else we have across the Indian Ocean. One earthquake this morning in the Mid-Indian Ridge, 5.3. Uh, let's see here. 
<clears throat> excuse me, goodness, goodness, got the wind picking up out here today. Uh, it's supposed to be 72 degrees, by the way, here in Northern California, so I'm uh, a little excited. Might get outside and get a few things done, uh, but not, uh, not going to start the garden this early in the year because we do have some cold systems in the forecast. Don't want to start no garden when it's going to go uh, below freezing. All right, uh, earth, earthquake activity across the, just kind of looking here, Papua New Guinea showing some deeper movement quakes here. 131 kilometers deep for that 4.4 early this morning. Uh, that stress is riding up along the plate boundary, the general westward plate movement here. Uh, a little bit of activity back into the Solomon Islands prior to that. Kind of goes bam bam like up here along this plate boundary, similar to a domino effect. Uh, a couple different things that leads me to believe that we're uh, looking at a little bit of further increasing activity across the area of the Luca C, the Banda C region. So we'll watch this here today. Uh, but also considering all the deeper movement into the Fiji area that we've seen um, over the last, technically it was only the last couple days, seen a, a tremendous amount of deep earthquake activity here uh, with a little bit of adjustment upstream. So I still think we need to watch the upstream areas uh, where um, the subduction takes place. Let's see, that Kermadec Trench earthquake of 6.1 back on the 13th. Uh, let's see, yeah, so I think we need to watch this area up here today, uh, considering all this movement. Uh, GeoNet, let's see if we got the most recent, yes we do. Uh, that 3.9 coming in just a couple minutes ago. The 3.9 striking in the area that seen the... Um, Where'd I go? Where did I go? Let's go back here. Uh, that seen this earthquake last week, the 5.7 in the Cook Strait area of New Zealand. That's going to be that uh, 3.9, a little bit of aftershock activity there. Seven minutes ago, a couple reports coming in. Oh, well, not a couple, more than a couple. 267 reports. Uh, some weak shaking around the Wellington, uh, North Island, New Zealand area. Prior to that, uh, a couple ones kicking off there, 2.8. That one uh, just off the coast of North Island. 3.9. This one got deleted an hour ago. Okay. 4.5 up along the southern end of the Kermadec Trench. Now, if this is true, this is one of the deeper earthquakes I've seen in the Kermadec Trench region. That's 647 kilometers deep uh, for a 4.5. Now, let me see here. USGS did not show that 4.5. Uh, I do want to check the EMSC and see if that is a legit earthquake because that's a, a, a super deep one. That'd be the four point. Uh, let's zoom in here. See if we can find it. It's not that one. It's going to be a little bit further upstream here of the Kermadec Trench. Uh, goodness, there it is. 4.5, two hours ago, 647 kilometers deep. But then again, these guys are taking the information off of the GeoNet for now. Um, Not for certain if this has been reviewed yet or not. It is a preliminary data, uh, so it could get deleted, it could get revised. Who knows? But uh, if that's the case, if this is actually a legit case, um, that's one of the deeper quakes I've seen in quite a long time along the Kermadec Trench, a southern end here. A little bit of movement off the Alpine Fault there, South Island, throughout the uh, morning time there, it looks like. A couple twos kicking off. All right, so we'll just continue to watch that Kermadec Trench area, south into New Zealand. Uh, let's see, one earthquake up here in our watch zone. I'm waiting for a huge red circle to pop up here one of these days. Of course, we'll all know about it because it will be newsworthy, and it will be uh, making these uh, seismograph stations ring like a bell. There's Southern California, by the way. Um, occasionally we do see that. 
Uh, kind of reminds me of brittle rock crunching out there up against the west coast. This, this station there, Barrett, is over into the Southern California area, roughly uh, in between the Elsinore and the San Jacinto Fault Zone down here. Uh, but nothing showing up as far as any earthquake activity goes on the map, but obviously we see it. All right, back to the Curl Kamchaka Trench, a 4.6. Coming in late last night, 130 kilometers deep. Into the Alaska region, uh, a little bit of activity across that region where we've seen the 4.0 yesterday up through the Cook Inlet area. Uh, all showing a little bit of uptick this morning. And the Big Island, nothing new going on. Um, the Pahala area still can seen, still seen a little bit of activity kicking off here. The coastline, uh, mostly some smaller microquakes, nothing major going on there across the Big Island currently. As far as any noteworthy events go, uh, <clears throat> let's see here. I think that's about it for earthquake activity, folks. Um, let me see if we're missing anything on the globe that the USGS missed out on. Uh, Atlantic Ocean, fairly quiet today. There's that 3.9. Yeah, just kind of all over the place here today, folks, as far as our earthquake activity goes. Uh, no major pockets of um, unusual activity. I've just seen that typical swarm out here around the uh, Turkey area. Those are all aftershocks, and that's going to continue for a little while. Uh, those are some large earthquakes out there uh, a week or so ago. All right, space weather. Let's get into that and see what's going on. Waiting for uh, another X flare. Currently uh, seeing a 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 50% chance and X flare probability at 15 with an elevated proton event due to all the heightened activity amongst these sunspots. A uh, quick glance at the latest imagery here of the magnetic structure. 3229 up here is the one that produced the X flare. That still does have some pockets of unstable uh, regions in that sun in the magnetic structure here uh, and I think that does harbor just looking at it the, the most recent imagery looks like it does harbor some potential for some M flare activity we'll continue to watch that um, overnight most of the activity been in the C flare category but we are kind of seeing that little upstream uptick so to speak in the energy that the uh, sunspots are producing Remember when that X flare popped off here a couple days ago? We were relatively stable, um, low, very low grade C flares popping off. Uh, and by the way, the C flare category, M flare, X flare, over here on the right side of the screen, that X 2.2, pretty much came out of nowhere. Um, so these things can pop off just out of the blue. Uh, really, no way to accurately 100% predict them. We can look at the structure of the sunspots and you know make the assumption that yeah this thing might be getting ready to uh arc a little but uh again like i say these can pop up out of the blue a look at the uv filter here got a little bit of flaring right now notice this one here on the northeastern side of the sun that is a sign of uh, some flaring popping up from a far side sunspot not the culprit of the uh, X flare a couple days ago. Let me see here. See if we can get a glance of it. Barely, just barely over here on the northeastern limb of the sun. But that one is flaring currently. We've seen it on that UV filter. And uh, I think that might be a, a, another active region here to watch in the uh, coming days. But for now, main threat 3229. We'll watch out here for some further flaring. Uh, G2 storm never materialized. That completely missed the Earth. And we are expecting, uh, well, you know, expecting that G2 storm uh, the other night and it never materialized. So uh, they're forecasting potentially a uh, KP index up around the 5 range uh, and a G1 class storm from that CME that was produced from the X2.2, the large flare. Uh, did send off a little bit of... Uh, 
well, sent out a lot, a huge CME, but not directly Earth related. So we may get Earth, uh, Earth direction, I should say. We may get a little glancing blow uh, from that CME. Uh, let's see when it's supposed to be here. Looks like on the February 20th UTC time of 1218. So that is going to be um, tomorrow sometime. Uh, 18, so probably roughly about now, um, tomorrow, which would not be good for, um, at least the States and Canada because it will be, uh, it will be lit. It'll be lit up here. We'll be on the sun side. Uh, so we'll see how this plays out. Either way, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Um, had this been definitely more or directed, we would be looking at a significant G2 or G3 storm uh, due to that massive full halo CME that it produced. It was a beauty. But uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, I think that's about it, folks. Uh, nothing major going on here. Um, see what we got for the other space weather site here, spaceweather.com. I like to check these guys out once in a while too. Um, yeah, they're still mentioning the same thing: Geomag geomagnetic storm watch, a minor G1 class storm possible in the tw uh, February 20th time frame. And I don't think we have any major asteroids here that are heading in the Earth direction. I mean, we've always got stuff floating around out in space, but uh, nothing showing up on the potentially hazardous asteroids chart looks pretty uh looks fairly good for now at least these are the ones that we know about uh looks like all safe passages there's been quite a bit of uh, uh meteors and little asteroids uh blown up into the atmosphere lately here so you never know until you never know until we know right i guess that's the the words to use today all right, guys, have a good day. I'm going to jump off here to enjoy a little bit of sunshine. And um, you guys stay safe out there. We'll chat you guys a little bit later on this evening sometime. Take care, everyone.